So here we'll see amino acid can polymerize to form proteins or peptides. So peptides are small condition products of amino acids. Hydrolysis break apart the peptide bond. So for when we talk about the the peptides, what comes into our mind? We have two amino acids or three amino acids joined together to form the peptide bond. So we can ask which part of the amino acid is actually coming in contact to form this bonding? It is the carboxy group, the carboxy group, the alpha carboxy group, and the alpha amino group. Remember the alpha carboxy group and the alpha amino group is the one that is coming in contact. So don't go and confuse, don't go and look at because of the carboxy group at the gamma carbon of glutamate. You cannot say okay, ah, glutamate can also form the peptide bond. You can actually form a peptide bond, but for the peptide bonds that are found in proteins, are usually peptide are usually formed between or are formed between the alpha carboxylic group and the alpha amino group. So you notice the colored hydrogen, OH and hydrogen to give us water. So once this condition reaction takes place, water is produced. So once you do that, the next thing you do is just to add this bond to the carbon bond. So that is what you have here, that bond to the carbon bond. So together, this is actually called the peptide bond. Peptide bond. So remember the, for, if you're joining these two together, we have condensation, water will be liberated. If you are, if you want to break this one back to this one, we must impute water. Water must be involved. That is why it is called hydrolysis. This is hydrolysis. Why this is condensation. So, you know, okay. The same thing we have here. You can notice that it is the OH here in the COH and the hydrogen from the amino group that is being removed to form water. As you can see here now when they do that you have a dipeptide so this is a dipeptide two amino acid so but if you add an additional plus another additional amino acid as you can see here you can see that this H will also remove with this H OH that's why you have OH here uh, okay so when we add this one becomes a tripeptide which means we have uh two peptide bonds you have two peptide bonds and three amino acids so it the every amino acid must have the carboxylic terminus or the c terminus and the amino terminus or the n terminus so this is a peptide so if you ask which amino acids or at least the amino acid that forms this peptide so one this is serine serine uh this one remember i'm just i'm just looking at them based on the uh, arrow group this is glycine okay this is tyroxine t y r this is tyroxine uh this is alanine and this is leucine l e u leucine so now we have serine glycine tyroxine alanine and leucine so now this is the three letter code for the three letter code abbreviation for the 20 amino acids that are found in proteins. This is a single letter code. So for glycine is G, alanine is A, valine, leucine, isoleucine, proline, methionine, phenylalanine. So because of the P here I've been used for proline, the other P is for phenyl, the other F is for phenylalanine so f sound so this is tryptophan w uh, tyroxine y because of the first t have been used for trionine 
First, they have been used for threonine. So, say thyroxine. Uh, S is for serine. C is for cysteine. D is for spartic acid. E is for glutamic acid. ASN is asparagine. Q is glutamine. Uh, H is histidine. K is lysine. R is arginine. So usually in bioinformatics, in bioinformatics, what they use is the faster sequence. They give us the faster sequence and tell us to predict the three-dimensional structure or the quaternary structure of the protein. So there are some other uh, web-based server that are designed to model this protein. So when you, once you put your faster sequence, it will predict the protein structure for you and give you the, the possible code that you can actually use to assess the, that particular protein in the protein data bank. That's what you see in my previous videos on bioinformatics. So faster sequence, they can give you something like this. Okay, they can say, let's just bring the, they will just bring the difference, for example, maybe a particular protein, and they will tell you, maybe you give you G, A, V, L, I, P, F, T, W, G, Q, K, R, H, N, E. So this is actually, I can actually, okay, for example, your, your teacher or your instructor can actually give you this as a faster sequence and ask you to draw the structure of the peptide. So we also look at the hydrophobic effects of amino acid. Okay, we also look at the hydrophobic effects, how the hydrophobic effect can affect protein folding. So hydrophobic amino acid tends to cluster in the interior of the protein. So if you have a protein, the hydrophobic part of the protein, the hydrophobic amino acid that are present in the protein will want to, you know, sequest themselves or cluster themselves such a way that they'll have minimal or no interaction with the water environment. So why the the other part of the amino acid or the, the let's say the hydrophilic amino acid usually forms the exterior part of the protein. So you might be given the protein, you might be given the protein and ask which of the amino acid will be in the interior of this protein or which of the amino acid will be at the exterior of this protein and this is actually drive the this is actually one of the driving force in protein structure so uh, so we have this okay translation from one letter to three letter code we have a a h n n a so what is a a is alanine so that means this might be correct histidine asparagine for n Asparagine for another N and alanine. So A is actually correct. So you can see this is ASP Aspartate You can see it's actually different from here. So A is not aspartate. A is alanine. So that makes this wrong and makes this wrong This is also wrong. So the correct answer or the correct option is option A Okay, so that's what we have here option A. So it's a vasopressin is a critical okay it's critical in regulating water reabsorption in the kidneys its amino acid sequences below which residue are found at the exterior of this polypeptide so here we are expected to know which amino acid is hydrophobic and which amino acid is hydrophilic so if we talk at the exterior of this polypeptide we are looking at amino acids that are hydrophilic hydrophilic amino acid are the amino acids that are usually from the exterior part of the what of the protein so let's look at the options option a all residues no option a is wrong because we have phenylalanine in this in the peptide option b we have phenylalanine which makes option b wrong option c we also have phenylalanine which makes option c wrong but option d we have cysteine, thyroxine, asparagine, glutamine, and arginine. So option D is correct. Mind you, if you want to know the amino acids that are hydrophilic in nature, you look out for amino acids that have 
hydroxy group in the arrow group, amino group in the arrow group, carboxylic group in the, in the CO minus in the uh, arrow group, SH in the arrow group. So, example of amino acid that have COH in the arrow group is aspartate and glutamate. NH2 is arginine, lysine, and histidine. Uh, OH, we have serine, threonine, and uh, okay, we also have phenylalanine. SH, we have cysteine, a uh, sulfur containing amino acid. But cysteine is not the only sulfur containing amino acid. We also have methionine. But methionine, the, the sulfur group of methionine is actually oxidized, it's not reduced like what you see in cysteine. So, okay. So if you also look at the, okay, like when I said the amino acids uh, of methionine and cysteine, let's go back to the structure. Okay, let's see if we have the structure. Okay, we don't have the structure here. So, okay, just make sure you go through the structure of the methionine and cysteine. These are the two sulfur containing amino acids, but cysteine is actually soluble compared to methionine so do not forget to subscribe click the subscription button share this video and do not forget to like and make your comments for future videos thank you very much